presidential debate happening. We have Jiva, we have Foot Soldier. For this debate, Jiva's taking the position that it's nonsensical to believe in both idealism and evolution. Foot Soldier's taking the opposition. When we base upon who concedes, we don't get a vocal concession from either participant. We put it to a voting poll in which you, the audience, can decide on who you think performed better overall in the debate. For this debate, they'll have nine minutes. No moderation. Thank you both for debating. You can get started. Okay, cool. So, do you think that the theory of evolution is nonsensical, Jiva? No. Well, well, okay. well that, that, sorry. Well, let me rephrase. I don't think that's relevant. Um, so I'm actually granting evolution. And I'm granting idealism for this debate. I'm just saying the two are incompatible. Okay. But let's say whatever metaphysical position you hold, is evolution mm -hmm. nonsense? Uh, well, it's... In my mind, it's unproven, but I wouldn't say it's nonsense. I think it does work with a naturalistic philosophy. Okay, so it's not, it's not nonsense. Um, no. Cool. Are you in the material world? I don't know. Would you be able to tell whether you're in the material world or an ideal world? No. So you've got no way of telling? No. So in the possible world of being the ideal world and the world that you're in right now you currently think in your world that the theory of evolution is not nonsensical but in the idealist world possible world which is ideal um you think it would be nonsensical right so but how would you distinguish between these two worlds what <laughs> It's not that's not that's not what the proposition is. I'm saying the belief in idealism and the belief in evolution are incompatible. It doesn't matter which is what well, it doesn't matter. The ontology doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which world you're in. I'm saying the belief in both these ideologies is incompatible. But there's no functional difference for you, whether you're in the ideal world or the material world. Well, no, I mean. Yeah, but you believe be. you believe that you are in the material world, therefore materialism. No, as, I don't. Th th I don't. I said I'm I, go ahead. No, no, I said I'm agnostic. I said I'm agnostic, right? But I'm saying oh. you, this is epistemology, right? So it, what you believe, right? So I'm agnostic, but you're believing in idealism and you're believing in evolution, and I'm saying those two beliefs are incompatible with one another. We don't know you're, what the reality is, do we? Well, your position is is self-contradictory or incoherent because what you're saying is you say that the theory of evolution for you is not nonsense, but you're agnostic. You might be in an idealist world, so you can't actually hold the position that having a belief in idealism and evolution is nonsense because you tacitly accept some possibility of being in an idealist world and you think that the theory of evolution is not nonsense therefore you have an incoherence in your belief well that makes that makes no sense to me whatsoever because i'm talking about this from an epistemological point of view right so i'm saying otherwise you could argue that for anything you could argue any two beliefs are compatible right because the whole point is no. we're, we're, yeah we're basing this from a subjective point of view right no, but, you, but you're, you're, well, well what i'll say for this view is not um, con this view that I'm presenting is not controversial. Thomas Nagel, who's one of the most famous contemporary philosophers, who's empathetic towards idealism, right? his specialty is philosophy of mind, and I believe he's the one who wrote, you know, the famous paper, "What's It Like to Be a Bat." He's a he's a huge critic of evolution, and he argues against the materialist view of the emergence of life and consciousness. And the, that, that's and he fine. He, he can argue against what he likes, and I'm aware of Thomas Nagel, the yeah. "What It's Like to Be a Bat" paper, which I've read. He later changed his views. He's, a bit known uh, known in the philosophical community to be a bit of a flip-flopper but Nagel was beside the point we're talking about the proposition we've only got nine minutes to do so and less time oh. because we're halfway through it but the <laughs> the proposition is that yeah. the theory of evolution is nonsense from the uh, from the no, viewpoint of an idealist right. world okay right? yes correct yeah yeah so you're saying that evolution the theory of evolution to you right now is not nonsense you have no, no okay, epistemological no. access to no, no. Okay. the metaphysical reality of this world, and you could okay. be in an ideal world, yet you find that it's not nonsense, and you have no way of knowing whether you're in an ideal world 
or whether you're in a dream or whether you're in a, a brain in a vat or whether you're in a material world or whether transcendental idealism is true or whether any other type of ideas, idealism yeah. is true, you have no epistemological right. access to that. So okay, if you're you're I'm going to break, I'm gonna have to cut you off here because the, you know, nine minutes, I've, I've got to get some, some of my arguments in, haven't I? But that's why I wanted to give you the opening statement and wanted to discuss this in a bit more depth, right? Because I didn't say it's, it's nonsensical to believe in, um, I, I didn't say um, evolution is false if you're an idealist, right? I'm saying it's, it's, it's um, nonsensical to believe in both ideologies. And that's where I have to come into now, how natural, how evolution is grounded, right? So like Karl Popper said, Darwinism is not a testable scientific theory, but a metaphysical research program, right? So we have to understand what the physical, metaphysical grounding for evolutionary theory is, right? And the metaphysical grounding for evolutionary theory is naturalistic philosophy. So what I'm, I, I am arguing is that you can't subscribe to naturalistic philosophy and subscribe to idealism. The two are incompatible. Right? This isn't true. So if we get out a powerful microscope and, and look at um, things under this powerful microscope or we analyse things um, and we see, um, ele- we, we, we see our atoms and we see electrons, right? And we, we do research into subatomic particles and all these things and we, we look at um, cells dividing all these mm. things. Can we do that? if the ultimate metaphysical reality is ideal? Yes, of course, but that's science. That's in, uh, that's called induction. Right, right? so, so claim everything that your is ancestor, compatible. The claim, that your is ancestor, the claim that your ancestor was a bacterium is not induction, that's abduction. It, it, it doesn't matter. Right? It's all compatible with idealism. There's no incompatibility whatsoever. And you well, don't have many any epistemological with access. Many idealists, many idealists would say science is about... Like science typically is thought about finding objective universal truth, but idealists would disagree and say science is actually about predicting experience. Right. So, for example, experiences the weather will do this next week. The uh, this comet will return on this date. This drug will cause this effect. That's what idealism is. For, that's what science is for an idealist. Right. But to answer the fundamental existential questions of life, the origin of the cosmos, the origin of the first organism, the origin of species. Right. Now, you have to appeal to a philosophy to answer those questions. And most no, 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 look, this, me, is this, this, this is a red herring. This is a red herring. This is a red herring. I'm going to have to interrupt you. you going, what are you going to appeal I'm to? Gonna have to interrupt you. I'm going to have to interrupt you. This is all a red herring. All of this is compatible with idealism. Whether you're a mind in a vat, whether materialism is true, whether idealism is true, it's all compatible with idealism. Whether we have atoms uh, that we can see in a microscope, it can be in an ideal world. Whether we have evolution, whether we evolve from bacteria, whether any of this is all compatible with idealism you have no epistemological access to the ultimate metaphysical nature of reality and you have said that on your view right now the theory of evolution is not nonsense so either you ha- you are saying that you're claiming to have epistemological access to the ultimate reality or you have to concede the proposition so can you no. provide evidence to the ultimate metaphysical nature of reality of course I cannot, but look, what I will so argue... So then you can see the, the proposition. Theory, Do you want no, me to give whole, that to you in modus ponens forms? The whole theory of evolution... Then you can see the proposition. Built, then you can see the proposition. Built, whatever, you say, whatever you say now is a red herring. You can see the proposition. No, I don't, because the whole um, theory... Well, can, you provide a, can you provide evidence that we're in a materialistic world? Can I provide evidence that we are in a materialistic world? No, I cannot. There, then you concede the proposition. Provide evidence or concede the proposition. Do you want me to give you a I think you're missing the point. I'm arguing that I'm the belief. The I, I'm arguing that the belief in both of these ideologies is nonsensical, right? I'm not saying that untrue. I know what you're arguing, but you yeah. have no epistemological access to the ultimate nature of reality. Yet your position right now is that it's nonsense it's not nonsensical the theory of evolution yet you look, don't I know agree. Both, you don't look, know I world agree. You, you could be in, in the ideal world right now you don't know right so you, you have agree. no epistemological access it's all of nature is completely compatible with idealism so either you have to concede the proposition or provide evidence now of epistemological access to the ultimate nature of reality okay. look, i agree well, I, yeah, okay. So I will say that I agree that both are possible. They could both be true. I'm arguing that the belief in both is incompatible, right? And the reason for this is because evolutionary theory is built on physicalism. Right? That's a fact, 
right? It's built on physicalism. You have to presuppose physicalism to get evolutionary theory. That's why Karl Popper says otherwise it's a, meta it's a metaphysical research program, right? So but if you presuppose physicalism, that eliminates idealism. So to, to believe in both those ideologies, to me, is incompatible. And that's, you know, I'll rest my case there. Okay. Well, my closing statement would be, in order to say that something um, would exclude idealism, um, you'd be able to prove that idealism was false. You'd be able to have access. You would have epistemological access to the ultimate nature of reality. And you would be able to very easily refute idealism if you could say oh well, that couldn't be the case if idealism was true but you can't that's the whole point we don't know if we're brain in the vat we don't know if we're in any skeptical situation at all we don't know if idealism is true or false uh, and you have said you don't have epistemological access to the ultimate nature of reality and so from your standpoint you're saying that evolution theory of evolution is not nonsense therefore you either concede the debate proposition or you supply evidence that you have epistemological access to the ultimate reality, which you said you don't, so you must concede the proposition. So it was going to go to a vote now, and yeah, he should have conceded. He didn't vote how you wish. Well, I don't think I should have conceded. I think foot soldiers should have conceded. So vote how you wish. <laughs> it's just just my word against my opinion against yours. All right. Um, do you guys want to go with the old voting poll? It's just up and down. Yeah, okay, it's quicker. <laughs> this debate's all about quickness. No, I'm happy with the, the new one. I think we've, that's what we've been doing. Why, why is it much? Is it a big delay to use the new one? Oh, we can go with the new one, I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me. I just figured since this was kind of a speed run, you would also want a shorter poll. But yeah, we can go with the new one. Uh, I, do you have a preference for Soldier? Oh, I don't care. If you want to go with the new one, let's go with the new one. Yeah, just, just go with the new one then. Okay, cool. Well, I think I'm pretty sure everyone...